but John John Florence has a chance to, to maybe knock him out of the contest here and, and go on to win and, and get in and himself. But this is gonna be a lot of fun. Ronnie Blakey with Richie Lovett and Mick Fanning. Mick, uh, you've surfed against both these guys. Who's the tougher competitor? Um, yeah, look, I, I, I don't know, both of them are so gnarly, <laughs> like, John, John reminds me a bit of a, like a Roger Federer, where he doesn't show much emotion, you don't know what's going on in his head, and he just pulls out big things when he really needs to. Philippe is a little bit more charismatic, sort of, a little bit more sort of how Parco competed, really fun and, and energetic, as we see Phil paddling in this one. Getting things started early, Toledo. Nice, clean swoop off the bottom. Steep section here, oh, and he has wow. the section. So swift in transition through that carve, and again, leans on the rail hard, and he hammers it. Big layback, great variation shown already. What a start for Toledo. Knows he needs to put the foot down. John John Florence has come off the two highest scoring heats <laughs> of the contest so far, and one of the highest scoring heats we've seen this season. Up. And Toledo's not done with this one. If anyone's going to throw something big on the end section, it's this guy. It's a clean finish. And wow. a big way to really grab this heat by the throat and give it a good squeeze. Oh, my gosh. That was unbelievable surfing from Philippe to <laughs> Toledo. How about opening your, your heat with that exchange? Wow. Just every single turn on edge with so much power, so much commitment. That'll get his tail up. He's excited about that one. This thing's excellent. Oh, here we go. Here goes Johnny. Here's the answer back. Let's see what it can do. I mentioned those big heat score totals. A couple of seven point rides, 17 point scores, I should say. What a start. Big hammer to get going. Just been unleashing so much power on his run through to the quarterfinals. And he'll need to do more because Felipe got so much work done on that last ride. It was a clean layback to slide. And somehow gets his board back on top of the section. So a fantastic response when the pressure was on. Now it might have been good for John John Mick to not have heard what Felipe's number came through at. It still hasn't dropped, but you know, that was the chance to surf without the, the pressure on, but I, I guess he would have heard the crowd reactions to all those moves. Yeah, you hear it all. <laughs> you know, um, Philippe's way was incredible. He got four massive turns, and it looks like he's on, like, slightly longer board, mm. uh, and so it holds that rail that little bit harder, and the spray was just getting sent to the moon. Looks like he's uh, jumped off the dark arts. How was that check turn to start things off, to get him in position for that one? Huge opening arc to start things off. That thing there was one of the best carves we've seen all week. He follows it up with another one. And that fourth turn was absolutely hammer time. And then Philippe comes through to the inside. He knows right now, he, he already knows he's got a huge score. Puts a little sugar on the end of it and uh, we're gonna see an excellent score drop here. Might have to change the scale and make it 20 points. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a good heat on paper. You know, it needs a good start, and Felipe provided that. Unbelievable turns, Mick, and just the confidence he built down the line. Yeah, like you just saw this this wave actually stood up. It had clean faces every time he went up into it. Look at that. Oh, just pedal to the metal the much whole on rail way through. That was. Um, it, it's just incredible. And it had that cup the whole way and allowed him to just go absolutely nuts. This next turn's my favourite one. But you have a look at the rail of his board. It's from the nose all the way to the tail. He's driving through. This turn is absolutely loony. You picked up Mick on the, on the board change, but look at that. Just he actually dug the nose in, stabbed it in there, released the fins, brought it back around under him. Take us John, this John. one, Rich. This was a huge start. Massive. Watch this first turn. Just gigantic. Comes out with uh, no room to spare as the lip just tries to chase him down. And John able to just uh, get into six gear to burn out of danger. And then a couple of nice wraps through the inside. This one stood up all the way in there. And John just knowing that he had to make a, a big statement at the end and gets a, a last little foam hit. That was crucial, that final manoeuvre. And pushing this number up. Here it is again, Mick. 
Oh, not an easy section to hit either, huh, Mick? How many, yeah, that, that double lip that he went at, um, that's something that he, oh, I'm not even going to talk, I'm just going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable stuff here. Toledo is going to drop a huge number to kick things off. Now looking for a good backup to put the pressure on Florence. And this wave's not really going to pan out for him the way the first one did. But on the outside, Florence again goes to that oh. layback jam. A, a more powerful version of the turn. Pushing through the green face this time, but he throws it away on a reverse there. But uh, we needed them to fall off then. We needed the <laughs> chance to gather our breath after those first rides. Unbelievable. Ross Williams, my old commentary sparring partner, he's watching on. Coaching John John Florence. Done such a good job to, to keep John's head in the game. Had, had to persevere through a, a number of injuries. I mean, it's amazing when you look at John's CT record as we see the scores coming in for Toledo. You know, it, it's, it was a tough way for the judges, Mick, because so early in a heat with such talent in the lineup, but they couldn't deny him. They no had way. to go near perfect. Whoever gave the 9-3 might have to go and readjust his score. That was incredible. <laughs> yeah. I was like 10 points. Um, Look, it, 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 you want these big heats. You know, that's that's the why you, you have the scale. It's like, if they're battling with nines, then perfect. But that was absolutely perfect surfing. The big rail turns have scored so well, Rich, through the contest so far. But the, the truly great numbers, the, the ones that go near perfect, have come when someone ha has given a manoeuvre that you just don't see coming. And Felipe's the master of that. That, that fourth move where he busted the fins free, and rode that slide just so controlled uh, it was beautiful to watch both of our surfers in this heat have a unique ability to take a standard carb or a roundhouse cutback and make it something special because of the extra the extra zing they put on the end of it the tail release uh, the body torque at the end of it just the critical nature of where they position their board and just how fast they can correct it it, it is amazing to watch because there, there aren't many surfers on the tour that can actually do what these guys are doing. Well, Felipe, he's racing back to the takeoff zone. He's got his nose just in front of John John Florence at the moment, but he's he's not safe just yet. An 8.43 for Florence, a fantastic response on the opening ride. Kaipo, I, I can't even imagine how much water was displaced out there. It was absolutely incredible. Felipe Toledo, with the precision that he had in his surfing, was just a beauty to watch the down carve and how he's able to connect the pure speed from Felipe Toledo. It also appears that he's riding a different board than in the last so he's made some equipment adjustments adjustments John John on the other hand pure power on that first smash on the outside second wave of the set really steep section and just met power with power it was an incredible thing to watch uh, by the way it's Felipe's birthday today so he would love a present of getting through this heat against John John Florence and speaking of birthdays I also want to wish a happy birthday to the other half of salt and pepper the WSL Strider Wazalewski's 50 today. I want to say happy birthday, Strider. Yeah, Kipes. Yeah, everyone's sending a big shout out to Strider. But yeah, Toledo, he wants the gift. He's going to have to uh, earn that, and he's doing it at the moment. Unbelievable start. 9.63. John John Florence, though, you know, to his credit, really threw everything he had at his ride. Um, you know, it was pretty close on the, the spread, but it, it was... Excellent surfing from both competitors. And different surfing. You know, John John had two huge laybacks in two huge critical sections where Phil's was just pure knife's edge precision. Uh, so, yeah, look, I, I feel like they got the scale right. Um, as we watch. So, John just <laughs> just takes it a little bit further each and every time he does this manoeuvre and just uh, over-rotates a little bit off this foam section. Great vision here, the front on angle. Just look at the angle of the board. Again, like Philippe digging the whole nose in and able to just muscle it back out. So much speed off the bottom, hits the lip and that uh, fluffy little marshmallow section was just a bit too fluffy. We know John is so well-rounded, Mick, but that layback jam that he's got, he's got a few variations of it. He can take it high and bust the fins. He can put it under the lip. He can stuff it into the pocket like he did just there. It's a, a real world title run uh, maneuver or a run for a final five finish, isn't it? Super reliable. Uh, you've been credited with a, a similar kind of turn, a forehand swoop when you were chasing your 
your big results. Yep. Uh, it's a great move to have. For sure. Sonny Garcia had the layback drop wallet, and it was the most powerful thing on earth. Um, and you, you need that statement turn. Uh, if you're going to go and win a world title, you need that statement turn to go, all right, if this is on, you know I'm in form. I was going to ask you, though, what if that's John's turn that he can really lean into on big sections when he needs a huge score, what's Felipe's? I think Philippe's knife edge rail surfing. Um, but then he's, he's got so many weapons, you know. You see him at... He's, he just did a variation of four different turns on that one wave. We still haven't even seen him go to the air yet. And he's, his technique in the air, the spins and the way he transitions straight into other turns, that's another weapon in itself. I feel like Philippe's got one of those cupboards, that, you know, when you open them up and there's just all, there's knives and, <laughs> and uh, guns yeah. and, and grenades and all sorts of things. <laughs> he's got all the weapons. <laughs> he's got them all in there. <laughs> he's got the full arsenal, yeah. He, he actually has a lot of moves that he can lean into. But I, I think you're spot on, Mick. I think the rail surfing in these past few seasons uh, on his runs to his best finishes at the CT level have come off the back of, of really clean rail surfing. And when he needs it and he goes to the air, the, oh, that's just... Uh, a whole nother adventure. Just over 22 minutes remaining. Let's hear from our first semi finalist here at the 59th edition of the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. It's Ethan Ewing with Laura Annabar. Ethan Ewing into the semi finals at the Rip Curl Pro here at Bells. What does this mean to you? Uh, yeah, it's, it's huge. Um, this is kind of the top of the list of the events that I want to do really well at. So to be into the semis is um yeah it feels really rewarding and um yeah i had a good prep here so it feels like it's paying off amazing and coming up against owen wright he's been an informed surfer of the event you know both of you have been surfing so incredible throughout the event but uh yeah what what did it take to beat him yeah owen's uh such a good competitor i said it before that heat and uh he's really smart and he's been surfing really good i know he's, he needed a big result so yeah, quarters is great for him and, um, yeah, wish him well for Margaret. And uh, we, uh, speaking to your coaches, you had a bit of a board change overnight. What was that about? <laughs> yeah, uh, yesterday I went to a 6-1. I was going to surf a 6-1 on my heat if we'd ran and it felt way too big and then I dropped back down to a 6-0. And now I'm on a 6-0 round pin. And it, yeah, it felt <laughs> good. So, yeah, um, I, was, I was happy just to kind of commit to it and it felt really good, so I was happy, yeah. Amazing work. Well, into the semi-finals, Ethan Ewing. Keep on that board. It looks great. <laughs> oh, thanks, Laura. Surfing so well, Ethan Ewing. And, you know, when you look at the, the entire draw, especially uh, the quarterfinal matchups, you know, you've got to say that the, the top three performers in the event this year are in that top half of the draw. Um, there is some incredible talent down on the bottom side, Mick, but it's going to be hard to stop whoever progresses out of that semi-final and ends up making their way through, no matter who wins this clash. Yeah, I think those three guys have been, you know, they've been in top form since day one. They've, they've gone out and, um, yeah, you've never seen any bobbles in them uh, and they just keep rising and rising. So... Yeah, whoever makes this semi up, it's just going to be absolute fireworks. Rich, this uh, this next exchange is a, a massive one. John John's got to claw some points back uh, from that opening exchange here. Yeah, he's over a point behind at the moment, so he is going to have to choose wisely when it comes to this next set. And uh, just thinking back to uh, Ethan's interview there, just for a second, just to change course, just on the rounded pintail thought that was a really good choice just to maybe grip into the wave face a little bit more and I've noticed Philippe's also made a board chance that Ky change that Kaipo referenced from he was on his dark arts board uh, and he's gone to a traditional polyurethane that's potentially dampening a bit of the bump and, and it certainly looks like it's it's you know really suited to these conditions. Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, this is going to be huge. Uh, I think we should probably pull up the uh, the replay of those opening rides at some point here. The 9.63, uh, just to, to take off on your first ride out here, Mick, and, and and perform so well. I also just want to pay attention to just some of the the bumps he had to negotiate off the bottom, but but wasn't thrown off course. Just managed to, managed to sort of lighten his touch on that rail when he needed to. And then when he found a bit of smoother water, Felipe's ability to just transition so swiftly up into those bowls, it, it just puts him in such a great position to then pick, as you said, what, what shot he's going to take, what move he's going to make in that, in that zone. Yeah, he's sneaky powerful and sneaky strong. <laughs> like, is. you think, you have a look at Philippe next to John on the wave, and he, he looks 
quite sm much smaller. John's a big kid, but one we were talking about before in the heat before with, you know, really good, solid foundations. Philippe has that. Like, you have a look at his stance. He doesn't move much. He, he doesn't move much footwork, but he's got really good hip thrust and, um, and strength through that core. Just the way he drives through the turn, it's remarkable. All the way around, and he just that extra little bit. There's the, the extra 10% that he puts into it. We don't see that from the other competitors. No, he, he goes, he comes into a turn, absolutely rips the top of it, and comes out even faster. It's sort of like that slinky effect, um, which is just incredible. As we see, John, like John's so strong. Oh, this turn is just so critical under the lip there, and there was a couple of lips to hit, and he picked the perfect one. What would have happened if John's wave stood up the whole? Oh, yeah. Like, where would the judges gone? They would have just thrown out two tans and, went and just gone home. Yeah. <laughs> and it would have been decided on that, that this next exchange, which, you know, is still obviously going to be the, the, the deciding factor. 17 and a half minutes to go. John John Florence, 6-2. Felipe Toledo, 5-9. I mean, Felipe was just a, a greyhound when he came onto the CT. But these days, like Ethan, he's pretty blocky he's got pretty good legs on him and as you saw then the incredibly uh, the incredible ability with body talk to, to rip through calves with a, a speed that not many other people have but having a, a look now at the deep stats powered by hydroflask 4-1 florence holds the edge over toledo their last heat was here in the final in 2019 but plenty of uh, history between these guys but yeah, I just think this is uh, this is such a, a classic matchup because you know two very different approaches. Even though both these guys are regular footers, richer and they have big airs, both of them. They have big rail turns as well. There's just when you start to break them down in in finer detail, they they approach their surfing pretty differently. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a smoothness uh, and a flow to John's surfing that uh, that Philippe sort of. Uh, I'm not going to say doesn't has, but but his is more kind of faster and aggressive in the way that he attacks the sections. Um, and uh, yeah, John, it's all about flow, isn't it, Mick? It is. It's all about power and strength. Um, I'm sort of looking at these two guys right now. They've been sitting for a while, and I'm just wondering what's going on upstairs. You know, uh, John's got priority. He's the point behind where. You know, he sort of has to make the, the decision on what wave to go next. Um, where Philippe can sort of like play cat and mouse, like, do you want it, do you not? And John has to make the decision to get that extra point above him on that next exchange. Yeah, 15 and a half minutes remaining here. And uh, these competitors, they're, they're sitting pretty close out there at the uh, takeoff zone, Kaipo. Felipe and John John sitting close and they're actually not even looking at each other right now, Ron. Just blocking each other out because, you know, I think they realize that this next exchange could very well make the heat. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to play a, a big part. Obviously, it slowed up a little bit. It was kind of the swell seemed to be pulsing at the start of this heat. So pressure's building, Rich, in this moment. You've been in this scenario where, where you've rivals kicked off with a bang you've got a good score on the board and then you've had to marinate on those numbers uh, is it a, a stressful time or are you just begging for the opportunity i think at this level it's just you're begging for the opportunity and it and it sort of simplifies the process too because you know you've just got to you've got to lay everything into it on your next exchange and uh as i said it's it, it sort of blocks out okay I, I should just surf this wave to to get a seven or an eight it's like no no i got i just gotta i gotta go to town but in saying that if you're taken out of your comfort zone and you push too hard and that's when you can make mistakes so it's a fine line very fine line <laughs> well just on 14 minutes to go toledo kicked off with a near perfect 9.63 He's been looking for the backup, 2.5 on his second ride, and he's just taken a fall on wave number three. And that opens the door for John John Florence, who's got priority and is sizing up this set. And he opts to go right in front of Felipe. Let's see what he does. Fades first, up into the first section, drifts that tail over the foam. Now trying to find the open face. Goes into the rotation, easily rides out of that. So giving us a few different moves on the bowl, but really 
this wave's just going to be a backup to that first ride as he looks to stomp it with something big on the inside. Aggressive turn, but just gets a little caught up in the white water. Meanwhile, on the outside, Toledo up again. And he's trying to better a 2.5, but he'll need more with Florence about to drop a reasonable score. Just under 12 minutes to go. Ronnie Blakey loving the opportunity to chat to Richie Lovett. And we also have the three-time world champ, four-time Bells champ, Mick Fanning with us in the booth. And Mick, it's just been interesting. It feels like the, the boys haven't been able to, to really replicate what they gave us on those first rides again. That was a really interesting exchange. Um, you know, Philippe won that first one and came off. Uh, John's first turn, I think he second-guessed it going into that first turn. He almost came off, and he's like, oh, now I can just throw the kitchen sink at it. Uh, so it was a really wild exchange. I think John John's definitely going to go into the lead, but, um, like, Philippe doesn't make those mistakes very often. He just didn't set that rail right where you watch John here. That first turn was sort of... He almost second-guessed it, um, and then he was like, all right, now let's just give it some... It's, uh, yeah, sitting there cold, sort of pressure building up. You, you, you kind of get the feeling, you know where it's going. I mean, he hit the two sections correctly or in the right place, but probably didn't get the right move that he wanted. You get the feeling it's going to be below that, uh, quite a bit below the 8.43. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, it's still, for the regular surfer you do a fin drift across a foamy section on the bowl you're, you're probably pretty happy with yourself but these guys you know they're at the very top of the pack john is a two-time world champion eight ct victories he cleaned it up nicely with this rich he did have a look at where his front foot is on his board here it's about six inches from the nose he widened the stance as he was uh, heading into that maneuver so we knew what he was going to do but like you said, Mick, it was just a little bit stop-starty through the entire wave. Philippe here, again, up and over that foamy section. And here's where Philippe wanted to really get going. He sort of gets a little slide. And I think at this point, Philippe's just going, no, no, I'm out of here. I want to get first priority again. So there's two ways Philippe could have got priority uh, in this situation. He either had to ride a wave and get back out there first or do exactly what he did there and uh, ride the second wave, but, but jump off quickly and get back out. Real shame for John, he wasn't able to finish that move on the inside because, you know, sometimes, Mick, you, you surf a wave through to the shore break at Bells and it just goes to garbage and it's lumpy and it's tricky to read. He had a nice, big, high-impact section to lay into. It looked good, the turn, but he wasn't able to complete it. Uh, it was a 6.33, so he left a, a half a point or maybe more on that inside section but it still got him in front and Felipe Toledo now needs a 5.13 with nine minutes to go. Yeah another interesting point on that run it looked like John just wanted to complete the wave but he got to that final turn and and he went to that 50 percent sort of turn like he didn't really drive into it and he came off he didn't actually finish the wave so you know if he finished that last turn probably would have been into a 6.57 and but so like he, he would have put Philippe's score up to like a six or something it's sort of a little bit harder where a five philippe can do two turns and get a five so it's 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 a really fine line and they're pushing but i think something happened on the ski because Must john john done. got uh priority and so i don't know if we got footage of that or what happened on the way back around because i thought uh philippe was out the back a little bit further and got onto the ski yeah, so. that's what i was thinking too but anyway yeah, well, uh, there, there's been a, a couple of situations like that where the ski will hang back and, and not go pick up the, the surfer straight away that, that's had that, that second ride in the set. So John John's got the priority. Felipe moves to the inside. Needs a 5.13. Lining up this section for something big. Bit of a transition turn. Has a lot of speed. He's going to go to the rail. Big slice off the top. Bit of foam on the face. No dramas for Toledo as he hammers the pocket and drives up into it once again, drifting the tail this time. Florence on the outside. We've got a, a battle for the ages unfolding between these two. Clean finish for Toledo. And the crowd put their hands together. And they'll have to do it again as John makes his way through to this end section. He'll want to line it up nicely here. Looks like he's going to go for something big. Goes for the huge reverse. And it's not going to work out for him. And the race is on now to get back to the ski. 
Well, Toledo's sucking in the breaths. Seven minutes to go. Did he get the number he needed, Mick? I think he got the five. Um, yeah, he, this is this is such a wild point too. Like, do you want to be in front? Uh, here we go. Same situation as just before where Philippe's on the ski first and now John's out, but he's a little bit further. So we're going to see if someone's going to... There we go. Well, we know that the priority quite often is decided right there on the inside. No, it's not the race between the jet skis to get back out to the, the buoy. It's uh, Felipe knew that was the situation. That's why he wasn't wasting energy and paddling out to meet the ski. They were always going to come in to, to meet him. It was the same scenario that ho uh, happened on the last exchange. So he was conserving his energy there and he was sucking in some big breaths because he got quite a bit of work done on that ride towards the end. Yeah, he did. He actually ripped it. But, yeah, if you wanted a race between the skis, you'd have Darren Hanley on the ski. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> had a race straight into the rocks. <laughs> Sorry, DH. Uh, but, yeah, look, it was... Um, yeah, Philippe really consolidated on that score. Um, it was an inside wave with uh, a really clean face. It was a bit tricky, but he got a lot of work done, uh, and he got the score that we... And he was a little more patient, wasn't he, Rich, yeah, with that first he section? You know, he, he had the wave on his opening ride that it allowed him to really attack from the start to finish. Whereas this wave, it, it kind of wasn't steep enough for Felipe to lay into one of those typical moves. So he kind of built through the ride. He, he stood back on the tail of his board and, and read it beautifully. Yeah, it, it, there wasn't that sort of rhythmic connection between all the turns that happened on the first one. He actually had to show a bit of restraint on the on the second ride here. A, and I actually feel like towards that second turn, I think he was going, I'm going to just throw something huge at this thing. And then once it walled up down the line, he went, no, hang on a minute, I'm just going to surf this. So let's watch what happened. The foam hit to start things off. Right here is when I thought, oh, OK, he wants to go for something big. But the wave only let him do that roundhouse cutback. And then it started to stand up again and he started to go okay hang on I'm just going to start throwing some really solid turns at this and I'm going to bank a good score I'm going to try and take the lead he finishes really strong because on John John's wave aesthetically the wave was prettier it didn't have all the bit of foam on the face so let's watch the the replay here of John takes a bit of time to get things going just sort of one of those half layback snaps and again not not one of the big wrapping aggressive turns that we're used to seeing Another little foam climb. And then at this point, I think John's going, OK, well, I know I haven't got huge points at the start here. I need to do something big to finish off. Throws the Hail Mary. And, uh, well, he covered some ground, but unable to just get uh, the board under his feet. How's these turns, though, Mick? These are really uh, just adding extras as you're transitioning down the line and keeping speed. But when you slow them down, there's still so much power in each of those turns. Yeah, so much power. That little section there where it flapped and then the, it broke on him sort of just suffocated all his spray mm. to go out the back. The judges sort of don't like that. Um, but also, too, on John's wave, it didn't draw out like Philippe's did. Yep. Philippe's had that one where it just hit the reef perfectly and just was steep the whole way. Cupped up all the way through, didn't it? John's looked a bit sort of like, I don't know, like water in a bathtub sort of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, he, he did really well. He got the big projection air, um, but he just didn't connect to that, that white water the way he wanted to. He might have been able to save it, but Felipe's in front now. 6.77 on his last ride. Now that's the goal, to, to better that number. And he knows that's not going to do it. So he gets out of there. That and uh, he, mistake. he's really put the pressure on John now because he got the jump on him on the opening exchange. Now he's put that solid back up. It, you know, it is more than a point difference in those opening scores. And that's what makes the requirement now so difficult for John Mick. Yeah. Um, look, that, that, that first point, 1.2 at the start, that's a huge huge lead but you know for Philippe to have the lead it sort of just if a proper wave comes through he can just go and surf it and just give it somewhere John's got to fight for a score mm. and so it changes your mindset a little bit sometimes you get a little bit heavier sometimes you stiffen up a little bit and you you want it that just that little bit too much um, so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see I just hope we get another set when they both get an exchange off and it comes down to where they end up on the sand wanting the scores yeah I, I, I hope we get two sets in just, <laughs> just start pulsing in now but this is uh this has been a great performance from both competitors, but it just felt like 
based on the, the strength of the opening exchange for Felipe, Rich, I think you were spot on. I think he wanted to work this crowd into a frenzy. He wanted to put on the big show and he went, hang on a minute, you, you've already got more than a point on him on the opening exchange. So, you know, uh, effectively, a six, a high six is almost like a, an eight for yeah. the, the, the number required. So he did actually make a strategic decision there to, to just surf solid and not too high risk and get the number he needed to put some pressure on. Yeah, it was great uh, tactical surfing there from Philippe. He's, he's really constructed a good heat, hasn't he, to this point? And just like that, we're at a minute 30 to go. And the other thing that Philippe snuck away, see how much further he's sitting inside, John? Yep. Um, he snuck away where John probably wouldn't have even looked at that wave. It's like, oh, it's too small, it's not going to do much. Mm. And so he just snuck under and just got that that total runner along it so sometimes priority oh. can just play into your brain a little bit more as we see a couple oh, of lines set out lines there. rolling our way Mick my mind's going back to 2017 it was a quarterfinal heat you remember it well you put two big scores on the board heat score of 15.77 John John was in trouble needing a big number in a situation like this what did he do mate uh, yeah, he turned into Virgin Atlantic Airlines and uh, flew across the world and did a giant <laughs> alley oop. Huge alley oop in huge conditions. It was so massive. huge. I remember going around on the ski and looking at it, and I'm just like, he is absolutely yep. out of his mind. I remember post heat too, you hit the competitors area and said, I thought we said no airs. <laughs> yeah. But here we go. This is John John Florence, the two time world champ, chasing a 7.98. Big section to get started. Oh, no. He throws himself above the lip, loses contact with that equipment and goes over the falls. And that was his shot at it. What do you put that down to? Well, Ross Williams frustrated there, John Florence. I mean, the pressure was on from the outset and he did so well to, to bank that excellent score himself. Um, there was some opportunities, but Felipe Toledo, just too strong. I mean, the 6.77 Rich was such a great adjustment. Really good pickup on just his change in strategy. A very complete performance. And Toledo still in the hunt for his first Big Bells trophy. Well, he's just knocked out one of the, uh, the favourites down here. And the form that uh, John John Florence has shown up to this point has been nothing short of sensational and remarkable. And, and Philippe's been able to, to come out ahead on this one. It could have been a final. And uh, we're getting all this action in the quarters. It has been a final. And uh, it's been a damn good one. One that we'll remember. And you just get the feeling with the form these guys are showing this year. You will be seeing them both in those WSL Rip Curl finals. Surfing off for a world title. But let's dive into the Harvey Norman recap. The action came at us thick and fast in the beginning, Rich. Yeah, the tone was set with this opening wave. Philippe Toledo just 100% commitment to every single turn, showing beautiful variety, getting spicy, kicking the fins out, releasing them, carving, arcing, slicing, and just pure, pure perfection all the way through to the inside. But John, he bounced back in a big way, driving hard off the bottom, bigger wave, critical turn under the lip. One of the best layback hacks we've seen from him. All event, grinding through, roundhouse cutback, staying with the energy source. And again, hammer time on the end section. So unbelievably strong. Uh, Mick, you, you finished off a Red Bull just before you walked in. I was worried about <laughs> you, mate. As these two rides unfolded, what a battle between two of the, the real heavy hitters on the CT. That was such an intense heat. There was so much on the line. We're talking about the yellow jersey, the ratings lead, and potentially a big bell, but um, they know each other so well. They knew exactly what both of them can do. And uh, yeah, this this was a very smart wave, surf wave. Um, you know, he only needed a five, and he ended up putting a, a, a high six on the board. And, and this right here, you never see John do that. Oh, no, that was just a, a really strange choice of manoeuvres for that for that particular section. He and knew he needed something big. Pressure. But, yeah, that pressure, you know, from sitting there and, yeah, just sort of just not connecting with that wave before. I probably maybe, oh, no, it got heavy. It, it felt like it, uh, it got heavy on him. Yeah. And you, you've been there before, like, when you need a big score, you just want to 
throw everything at it, but sometimes it just doesn't happen. Well, the, uh, the race for the final five is on for, for John Florence. Still an amazing performance from him here this year. Still holds the two biggest heat score totals of the event, but Felipe Toledo too strong. Mick, thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Still me. more quarterfinal action coming your way. Stay with us. We'll bring in Joe and Bugs for the call.